welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. And as you can see, RJ has already gone to work. Um, I've actually been at a horse show and back. It's the afternoon. It's been one of those crazy, crazy weeks, and you'll know why here in just a little bit. So we're going to start with In the Chapel. And in the chapel, it is Jeremiah 30, 17. And it says, But I will restore to you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Um, now we're using this verse because if you followed us not too long ago, Carl, um, we thought he ate some mushrooms and something happened. He, we put out a prayer call and he healed very quickly. Now Wilbur's showing signs of the same thing and he is not getting over it as quickly. So he's got, um, he started showing signs Friday night. We did everything that we did for Carl and he will be going to see the vet be evaluating Monday so we're not real sure what's going on um Wilbur's fine he's just shaky and can't get his balance and stuff so um sorry yes I'm drinking Pepsi today I need a little boost of caffeine and it's cold I don't have any cold water <laughs> we've been a, I've been at a horse show so uh, let's move on into in the barn stalls of course our big thing right now is um, Wilbur. Uh, he just, Bidet still hasn't had her baby. I'm just, you know, we're just waiting. There, there's nothing really going on with the animals. They're all healthy. They're all doing well. Um, Wilbur, he's shaky. Hey, give me a minute. I'll go get him. Let's see if I can. Let's see what I need. Wilbur, you going to get There we go. And being shaky means that he can't balance for a while. He does better hugged up against me. Yeah. See there. There he goes. And right now he's not shaking at all. But then, see, when I take off all the rest, see, he can't hold his head still. So, Carl, get down. So, he, uh, he does, he's doing okay. But I just don't like the wobbly. He, falls a lot. Yes, he's my boy though. Yes, he is. And he is getting big, so yeah. Um, we did hear that um, the lady contacted us when she saw what was going on with Wilbur and Carl, and she said that they had one pass away, showing the same signs, and they said it was worms and all this stuff. We had them worms when we first got them, so this shouldn't be worms. Hey, hey, hey! Carl! Bad dog. Not so rough. Carl, I'm going to let Jethro have you. Jethro puts Carl in line. He's the only one big enough to do it. So, um, But we don't think he's in any extreme danger. Worst case scenario, he's going to have to go into um, rehab to get control of his muscles, whatever's going on. If you know me, you know that he will be um, taken to the pond to swim. That's a good way to help uh, balance and stuff and we'll do what we have to do, huh? Yeah, he is. Because he is, he's got pretty blue eyes. He's just gorgeous, aren't you? Do you see yourself over there, Wilbur? Hmm? No? He just likes to be held right now because it keeps his shakes down. So, um, the other thing I did do, let me go put him down. For the record, he can stand. He's just really wobbly and falls over a lot. Uh, so it's not that he has to be carried. I just make it's easier. <laughs> um, the other thing I did do was I have a rug up in the front room, and they're just like twenty dollar rugs from Walmart. They're not like pristine. They're they're just because the floor gets cold in the winter, and this one's got spills on it. So I brought it down here, and Wilbur is able to stand on it better than the concrete floor and it's because the concrete is so slick hey guys you're all right wilbur they do tend to get him down and hold him down carl can now take him and see now he's back up going but carl can get him down that's a big thing um okay so really nothing going on in the barn stall is terrible um mending fences we've got um some fence still to fix we're working on it 
but we took time out to um, build the shed. So, uh, yeah, we've got to get a shed built for the winter for Buttercup and uh, Charlotte. And so RJ and I went out. Um, RJ is the first. RJ is um, the one actually putting thought into this, telling me what wood to order, um, and he is building it. We have helped put in some screws and this and that, and just kind of help him get it done so that it goes faster. But he's in charge of building the pig shed, so he's done really well with it. And uh, I told him that he got himself in a little bit of spot, was short some money, and I said, I'll pay you the money if you'll build the pig shed. So. He has put so many screws in that <coughs> Carl to make it super sturdy because he says it's paying gig. <laughs> so apparently when he helps me fix other things, they aren't paying gig. But this is a paying gig, so yeah, it's going to be strong. Um, anything else? Not really trying to get that done before winter. Um, the last couple of mornings have been kind of cool. We've been turning off the air conditioner and bringing in fresh air from outside. Uh, got the Wilbur thing going on. Um, in the yarn farm. The farm. Quit chewing on his ear. Carl is chewing on Wilbur's ear. Uh, the farm itself went to uh, the petting zoo. Friday we provided all the Noetta children with... <laughs> The full straw experience, well not the full straw, the traveling straw experience at the local fair. I think we had, I don't know how many classes to be there, all the pre-K and kindergarten from Nowata. So, um, I don't know, it's, I think it's six classes, maybe seven, I'm not sure. But uh, it is what it is. Um, each class probably had... 15 to 20 kids in it. So, I mean, there was 100 and some kids. So, and that doesn't account all the adults that were intrigued with what we had and all that stuff. Um, and the 4 H's that were there for the fair and all that. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I entered stuff in the fair, but that's not... Oh, we've had tatters through. Um, I'll put a link below. There was a gentleman who came to the farm, and he was part of the tat. Um, he's on Facebook, not Facebook, uh, YouTube, and he's documenting all of his days. Although I missed day seven. I know he stayed at the one place, but I don't know if he just took a day off or what. But anyway, um, he is 13 days into his trip, 14. He's actually having trouble finding Wi-Fi. So when I say he's 13, 13, I think, is what has posted online. And yes, I've watched all of them. Uh, but I think he's more like day 15 or 16, to be honest with you. So um, he is having trouble uploading. He is doing it in a off-road vehicle, not on a dirt bike. Um, and he is taking detours off the beaten path to places, mm -hmm. small towns that he wants to see. So we were a stop on his... Mm -hmm. um, Carl and Wilbur playing, and Wilbur's got upper hand on Carl, which is good. I like to see that, because it means Wilbur's getting his strength back. Um, his coordination is what we're worried about. Who knows, he might just have a flopsy dog around the rest of his life. Um, anyway, uh, he came, RJ actually spun for him and showed him how it worked. Uh, talked about the wool, gave him a tour of the farm. It was really, now he didn't stay the night, but he just made us a stop. So I will post that link down below so you can see what he sees. Um, it's kind of neat. I don't know the exact spot we are in the thing. I want to say it was towards the front, but I don't, I'm not sure. All right, so that's in the yarn farm. Uh, in the field, we had, oh, well, yeah, let me back up because mending fences, we had to fix the tractor. Now that it is fixed, we still have the final section to do with the hay. And we will get that done as soon as we get a four or five day stretch with no uh, rain. So that'll, that'll be good. Um, let's see. Anything else? 
in the fields. We've got gourds and stuff going. Wilbur, you okay? I think it's one some food. Um, they go over and start picking at the food, and he has trouble getting because rear end is on the concrete, so he's having trouble kind of sliding his butt along. What's the matter? Um, he hasn't learned to stay totally on the carpet, but in all fairness, the carpet has been there less than 24 hours. So, and he's figured out he can stand up better on his own on it. So he drags himself over it, oh, and then stands up. All right, we're just going to move right on into in the farmhouse because that's where I have the most. Um, it was fair week. Yes, hence why everything's gone. <laughs> um, okay, so. Let's start and back up. We did the petting zoo on Friday. Wednesday, I put in a few things. Everything that I put in won a, a ribbon. Um, we're a really small county. So um, what did I put in? I put in, oh, I put in one of my woven rugs, which took reserve champion for the entire wool class. I was kind of proud of that one. Um, I Navajo applied a uh, thing of yak for a... a hand spun yarn. Um, I put in my soap, my lotion bars, and my lemon balm. I put in a poem, and I put in loop of gourds. So, uh, yeah. The loop of gourds were more of a intriguing thing to the kids. I could touch them. Um, it was funny because the one lady said that she had had some, they couldn't say it was a sponge. And she said, sponges come from the sea. This comes from the garden. <laughs> so, um, they're not sure where that fits in, but they were. It was definitely cool for people to see. Um, and then, oh, and I made little Henry. Um, is a good friend of ours, son, and he does the horse show. And he put in some peppers and some ornamental gourds that he grew, and he picked them from his garden and stuff there at the house. Well, technically, I thank the good Lord that we are a small group because. Henry's ornamental gourds and my loop of gourds are considered ornamental gourds would have had to compete against each other and I told her I said well technically it's a dehydrated and altered gourd and she goes that's right so she made a different class for it so I didn't have to go up against Henry so Henry got a blue ribbon so yeah uh, that's pretty bad when you're like oh not going up against that kid let him win so um, he's four so that's a big deal to a four-year-old he got some uh, um, Rivers at the horse show today. He got a little fight. He got a grand champion. He got a rosette. To him, that's a big deal. Um, and plus, his two, his blue ribbon for his peppers and his gourd. So he had an amazing year. And uh, anyway, so as always, I came home, got all that stuff taken care of. Uh, and I had already had this one project that's sitting here started and I couldn't figure out what I was going to do and then it hit me. Um, I had seen it done online. The measurements were wrong online so when I ordered this stuff it didn't work and I wasn't going to redo everything. So what am I talking about? Um, my tiny cabin is just going to have oil lamps. I don't want electric lights. I don't want, you know, I'll have a flashlight down there and that's about it. So um, I wanted a, an inexpensive way to do oil lamps. And so I Googled it like every good person nowadays does. And I saw a bunch of Pinterest things. But the simplest one that I found was like this. And it took my wine bottles and it made them into like a tiki type torch. Now, the way that they did theirs, and I'm just going to take this one apart and show you. All right, so this is a tiki torch wick, and they make these little coupler things. Now, this is where the measurements were off. Um, this, they said if you put Teflon tape around this, it would go into a bottle and stay there. Well, no, unless you pack that Teflon tape really around it. I don't know if it was done in Europe, if they have different um, size bottles. I do know that the ones I saw was a cork bottle, and these are screw-ons. Um, I have a couple of cork bottles, and it didn't make a difference. The opening was still about the same. So, um, so I had ordered these, and they were 59 cents a piece. And I think they're 3 8 to a one-half 
copper coupler, but they might be. I, I know that part of it is a one, is a half an inch, but I don't know which end, and I don't know if it goes to three eighths or five eighths. It, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I have my wick, and I was kind of disappointed, but you know they fit really tight, and that right there, you know that you can you can burn that. Okay, thought I was doing pretty good. So then I got to playing with it, and I thought. Wow, because this is how it was supposed to go down in there. But it was supposed to stop where it got plunged out, and it was supposed to look like that. And I thought, man, what am I going to do? Because now I can't, you know, this bottom part holds the wick perfectly, but I could put the wick up here, you know, and make it burn. So anyway, what I came up with, it took me, and it literally took me weeks to think of this. I don't know why I didn't think of it, about this, but as you can tell, it goes down in there. This copper part just slides right down. Yeah, didn't work. So, what I came up with is I gave a dollar seventy something for twelve of these, um, and fifty nine cents a piece for these. So, let's say a dollar eighty would be divided by twelve. I don't know. I guess I should have done the math before I started this, huh? But anyway, it's not very expensive. Let's put it that way. So I've got that. The wicks were super cheap. I don't even remember. It was less than 10 bucks for 12 of them. So, honestly, less than $2, you can turn any old bottle into a lamp. Okay, and I'll show you how. These are the washer. Now, I literally took this coupler with me, told them, hey, I'm bringing this in. And I had the wick, too. And I went over to where they sell the bulk washers, and I bought <coughs> the ones that would go like this. Now, once I figured out what size was in the little bin, I just grabbed 12 of them. The problem being is, and I'll show you here, not all of the washers are perfect. So when you go like this, some go right through. So I was like, well, that was a bust, but not really, because what I did was I took a hammer and I made it not perfectly round. It's not a big enough difference that you can tell. But now when you try to put it down through the washer, it doesn't sink. Because it's not perfectly round. So that makes them very secure. These bottles, um, I made 12 of these. Okay, I don't have 12 bottles. But I do have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bottles. And I have 6 more to make. Okay. Um, I do want to take like price tags off, but like this is a Lost Angel. It's a Moscato. Um, and I really liked it, but I don't want to throw the bottle away. So it will be a lamp. Now, in order to finish this, you have to put half water and half oil. You can use olive oil or tiki torch type oil. And I haven't figured out which I'm going to use yet, so they're not filled, but. I'm actually going to fill them and test them before I put them in the tiny house. What are you doing, Carl? I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. You hear this scratch, scratch, scratch. Carl, how do you rough get back there? Really? This? Whoa, whoa, shut it down. Come on. There you go. It's over there. Huh? Well, of course you got it now, silly boy. Okay, so somehow his play rope got under the wine rack. Don't ask me how. <laughs> he flips it around a lot. So anyway, I did make these, and I I have a couple of girlfriends that, and see, I took this sticker off, and it, it's dirty. I'm going to have to, like, um, alcohol it or gooby gone or something because I don't want any price tags on them. I just want the beauty of the bottle. So the same thing here, you can tell what the price tag is. This is a Reschling wine. Um, and this is a Harbor Mist. It's a pink Moscato raspberry. I wasn't real impressed with it, but it was okay. Um, so, uh, actually this is a Spate Mist, not a Reschling. Reschling is still over there. So anyway, but I did do um, several of those, and I have some that I'm going to give away as Christmas gifts, so, yeah, I'm really proud of those. 
The other thing is, oh, I started crocheting a double. I don't like it. Just putting it, it it's not that I don't like it. Okay, pattern is simple. Loved it. Um, and it, if you know, I don't really read patterns. I am spending more time off the camera today than I am on the camera. This is sad. Hold on. Okay. So, um, I'm making hot mitts, double hot mitts. Um, as you can see, it's done in the round. And it would be a pocket like this, but it all comes in the way that you fold it and then seam this together. But honestly, this is a little small. Um, it really is. So, um, yeah. What I think I'm going to do is I also have this little ball I'm going to play with. I'm not going to rip that out. I'll have a little one. It would be great for microwave. But I up the hook size, and I have this one. And so I'm thinking that this will be... Um, my next hot mitts and these will go in next year's fair just saying already get ready for the fair so um and this is a blue cotton and this is a white with little blue stack uh spots i don't know if you can see it. little splashes and it's not even really a white it's more of a cream so i'm going to use this same um pattern and do it uh you can see better here but, and that will be seamed up. When I get to where I want it to be, it will be seamed up. And it will be square and all that good stuff. But I just don't like, I don't know, it just seems small. Just, and I'm pretty sure it has to do with positioning. You know, you've got to get this just right and get it to curl just perfect. And, you know, and I can put more, um, rounds in there and maybe make it a little bit wider by making more rounds. I, I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll see. But I'm going to make two of those. I've got my bottles that I've been doing. Um, what else did I work on? I don't know. I keep saying that this next weekend or so I'm going to get on to getting some soaps because Christmas is coming up and I have people that want to buy from us. But other than that, I think I've been working. Now, I did cram four days um, compacted them down so I could have Friday off for the petting zoo. Then RJ had a rodeo. He didn't get anything done. He, uh, it was a real deep sand arena and he's never roped in one that deep before. And he fell. Um, not horrible, horrible. When he got to his cap and went to flank and the sand gave and he wasn't used to that. And you have to bend your knees to get up underneath it to get up underneath the cap. So when he bent his knees, laid the cap over the weight of him and the cap sunk into the sand, which then, when he went to lift, he didn't have the lift he needed. So if he fell, um, it, it's just a learning thing. Because we don't rope in sand, and that was his first time roping in sand, it is what it is. You know, and you have to learn every style, every circumstance, and, and sand is not something that he's ever been experienced with. So it's okay. He got experience. Um, he's working the team roping today. Uh, the horse show was today, and last year we declared that we were going to start a new tradition with Gage and Trista and Henry, and RJ, me, and Lee. And those from this family that are available, Gage was our extension agent for years, like 12 years. He grew my son up, and he was at every horse show with him. So now Gage has a son and his parent, grandpa, this. Gage's parents, Trista's parents, don't live here. They live in Illinois. So we go in our his cheering crowd. Um, Henry is getting old enough to know that he's four now. And he started school this year. And it was so funny because I asked him, hey, guys, too loud. I asked him the first event. I said, can I cheer? Can I cheer? Can I say, yay, and go, Henry? And he looks at me and he goes, no. And I said, why not? But that's what I came for is I came to cheer for you. He says, no. I said, okay. So it is lead line class, which is just a halter class where he walks the horse and stuff. And mom was there helping him. He did the second one by himself. And um, after that, we had a break. So I went to pick up pizza. And that's kind of our little tradition is I get the pizza. 
we have pizza, we have pop. Um, we did have water there in Gatorade. It's just, it's for show, so we drink pop. <laughs> um, and Henry, I got him fruit jammers. He loved them. They're uh, like a little foil Kool-Aid pack. Great. I sent them all home with him. So there was like 10 to a box or something for two bucks. It wasn't very expensive, but he loved them. So anyway, um, after he ate the pizza, he got to ride. And his second class was lead line where he got to walk one way and then he got to trot for a little bit and he got to walk. And the whole time dad has a line on it so that he's got reins, but dad's got control if anything should go wrong. And uh, they call it lead line. And so um, he got to go out there and do his class and he was having a blast. And I asked him when he, his dad threw him up on the horse and says, okay, you ready? And I said, Henry, please, please, can I cheer for you? And I said, all I want to do is say, go, Henry, go, and I clap. He goes, okay. And I said, really, I can cheer for you? And he says, sure, when I go fast. I said, okay. So there's a part up there where they walk out and they change direction and then they trot and they change direction again. They walk and they start trotting the other way so that you walk, trot, walk, trot, going each way. Anyway, so when Henry was going fast, he came by the front and I was like, yay, Henry, go, go, go. And he just grinned as big as could be because he wouldn't let mom cheer. Um, mom didn't get to cheer and dad didn't get to cheer because they were cheering for the other class and I got to cheer for his lead line class. And so um, when we got done, it was so cute because he, he actually ran, won with his pony. He won um, the champion for six and over mare, no, six and over pony champion. So she was the best pony champion, pony horse there. Um, and uh, then, yeah, he had a lot of fun. Let's just put it that way. So um, he got some ribbons and him and I talked about his other ribbons. He was mad because dad didn't get down there and get them. And I said, well, I'm sure Kathy's got them. And uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway, it's just been fair week. It's been fun. Um, the poem that RJ read that was called Wreck of the Year. Uh, I put that one in. I think that's it. Really, for what was going on. I mean, I had a little crappy stuff going on. Work, building the pig shed, and doing the fair. I, I just was busy. Um, oh, and I have folding, so, yeah. <laughs> but I've been keeping busy. That's what it comes down to. So, um, and RJ has too. So, I am going to get off of here. Like I said, and this right here, I don't remember the, um, like, it's not my invention. It's not my pattern. I looked at it, and they showed the principle of it, and pretty much, I'll give you the, the thing. It starts here and then you go and you add on a couple so that it goes around and it goes round and round and round. And then um, as you get around, it, it naturally starts to curl because you're not adding in any more stitches. You only add in stitches at the bottom to get it to, to turn to start going around and around. And then this just... If you pull it out like this, it curls. It just does it. So, um, and it looks much nicer than having it. I could do it this way and keep going and make it stitch down here. But, I don't know. I just don't really like that. I mean, it's done in the round the same. I like the diagonal look of it. And all I had to do is pull it a different way. So, anyway, not my formula, pattern, whatever. Don't remember where I saw it. Guesstimated how many stitches. I literally went like this and said, hmm, I think that's as wide as a pot holder. But then when it's a diagonal, it makes it a shorter pot holder. Because if you look at it this way, that is about the size of a pot holder. But on the diagonal, not so much. So um, I'm going to have to go back. I'm not going to rip this out. I'll use it as a little microwave pot holder. Um, RJ fixed his own microwave, so I'll just make him some for his room. But... 
uh, next go round, I will be making it longer on the diagonal so that it'll be a bigger one. Other than that, oh, Wilbur's getting in on it. He's getting control. It's just taking slow. So if you guys want to say HP prayers for him, I would definitely. That is the only thing different is we didn't put out um, prayers for him and ask for prayers, but we are asking now because apparently that made a big, big difference. So, anyway, all right, I'm off of here. I will talk to you guys later. I'll put the link to the tat um, video below. And I will see you guys next week, I think. Bye.